welcome you all welcome you all for our engineering chemistry classes today we discuss on energy system which comes under module 3 so let us know about the definition of chemical fuel chemical fuel is a substance is a substance which produce a significant amount of amount of heat energy and light energy when burnt in air or oxygen is what we call it as chemical fuel so chemical fuel is a substance which produces a significant amount of heat energy and light energy when burnt in air or oxygen now classification of classification of fuels is normally is classified based on its physical property that is solid liquid and gaseous so in which we can see here that is primary fuel that is the classification itself then secondary fuels so primary fuel is a one which is natural and does not required any chemical processing before utilization is what we call it as primary fuel secondary fuel they are produced from primary fuels that is natural occurring substances and by subjecting to treatments which alter their chemical composition and improve their calorific value is what we call it as secondary fuels so we can think of by and large in a short way primary fuel is a naturally occurring and which is not undergoing any processes before utilization secondary fuel which is derived from primary fuel and which is undergoing chemical process to alter its calorific value is what we call it as secondary fuels now i'll just give some example for primary and secondary fuel with respect to solid so as i told primary is a naturally occurring that is wood coal so these are naturally occurring and for liquid i can give a crude oil and for gaseous that is natural gas so these are the example for primary fuel so secondary fuel which are derived from primary so now wood and coal which is nothing but charcoal and coke similarly from crude oil we can get petrol diesel etc and this lpg and etc so this is the classification of classification of primary sorry chemical fuels now moving on to a calorific value of a fuel value of fuel so here calorific value it is measured in terms of heating efficiency or calorific value talks about the efficiency of the fuel it is defined as amount of fuel evolved amount of heat sorry amount of heat evolved by the complete combustion 
by the complete combustion of unit quantity that is solid or liquid of the fuel in air or oxygen is what we call it as calorific value so amount of heat evolved by the complete combustion of unit quantity of fuel that is solid or liquid in the presence of air or oxygen is called as calorific value of a fuel so here calorific value is expressed in terms of joules per kg joules per kg with respect to solid and liquid and with uh, for a gaseous layer fuels we can express in terms of joules per cubic meter so these are the expressions which we are using to express the calorific value so calorific value is expressed in two forms or two ways one is gcv that is gross calorific value gross calorific value and another is ncv another is ncv that is net calorific value so we'll discuss one by one gross calorific value so gross calorific value is defined as amount of heat or a quantity of heat evolved by the complete combustion of unit quantity of a fuel in air or oxygen and the products of combustion are brought down to room temperature is what we call it as gross calorific value or gross calorific value is defined as amount of heat released amount of heat released when unit quantity of when unit quantity of fuel fuel or uh, it may be solid or liquid burnt completely burnt completely in presence of air or oxygen and combustion products combustion products are cooled to room temperature so is what we call it as gross calorific value so gross calorific value is defined as amount of heat released when unit quantity of a fuel either solid or liquid burned completely in presence of air or oxygen and the combustion products are cooled to room temperature is called as gross calorific value so most of the fuels contain carbon and hydrogen on combustion of carbon and hydrogen are converted into carbon dioxide and steam respectively that's what we call it as hydrocarbon that is carbon and hydrogen on cooling here we said the combustion products are cooled to room temperature on cooling combustion products steam gets steam get condensed to water water so there liberates what latent heat of steam latent heat of steam hence gcv this gcv is always higher than the ncv so gcv is always higher than the ncv because it includes latent heat of steam so now moving on to the net calorific value that is ncv so is defined as quantity of or amount of heat released amount of heat released when unit 
unit quantity of fuel either solid or liquid burnt completely in presence of air or oxygen and the combustion products and the combustion products are let off into the atmosphere let off into the atmosphere is what we call it as net calorific value i repeat amount of heat released when unit quantity of fuel solid liquid burned completely in presence of air or oxygen and the combustion products are let off into the atmosphere it is what we call it as ncv and here since we are leaving the combustion products into the atmosphere it is not including the latent heat of steam and hence the latent the hence the gcv is always higher than the ncv so now we can calculate ncv is equal to gcv minus latent heat of latent heat of water formed latent heat of water formed so which i can write it in this form gcv minus 0.09 into percentage of hydrogen into 587 587 is the latent heat of steam into 4.187 so this is a formula to find out what ncv so which will help in solving the numerical problems on bomb calorimeter now we quickly move on a very important thing i'll write it like in a very important so that is nothing that is determination determination of calorific value of solid uh, liquid using so using bomb calorimeter so this is very 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 important question definitely this will be asked in examination the diagram of the bomb calorimeter is like this so we can see here i'll just explain you about the diagram we have a stainless steel cylindrical bomb we normally call it as a bomb cylindrical bomb and in which we have a stainless steel crucible in which we have taken a known weight of a fuel in the form of pellet and to which we have a magnesium fuse wire which are connected to the electrodes which is again connected to the external source and to provide a sufficient oxygen for the conversion of a fuel we have an oxygen valve here that is inlet and this strongly leaded stainless steel bomb cylinder is going to be kept into a copper calorimeter and surrounding to it we have to take known weight of water and this water is having or to note down the temperature initial temperature and final temperature of the water we have to take beckman thermometer here and to dissipate a, a constant temperature or to, to, not constant to dissipate a equal amount of temperature uh, surrounding to the water we are using in a mechanical stirrer and we have in a copper calorimeter as i told and here uh, this air jacket and water jacket uh, container is here and which is covered by an uh, ebonite cover so this is the diagram of an uh, bomb calorimeter now we'll discuss first about the principle the principle behind of this bomb calorimeter a known weight of liquid I'll explain with the diagram only. A known weight of liquid or solid fuel which we have taken in the stainless steel cylinder or the crucible 
which is subjected for combustion and whatever the amount of heat liberated that is going to be absorbed by the surrounding that is water and copper calorimeter so hence the amount of heat liberated is exactly equal to the amount of heat absorbed by the water and copper calorimeter hope you all understood so here the amount of heat when the fuel a known weight of fuel is subjected for combustion the amount of heat released is exactly equal to the amount of heat absorbed by the surrounding that is water and copper calorimeter so the amount of heat absorbed which will get to know by this beckman thermometer and whereas the amount of heat absorbed by the copper calorimeter which is determined by taking a fuel whose calorific value is already known to us by which we can calculate the amount of heat absorbed by the copper calorimeter so this is the principle of the bomb calorimeter which is going to work on and now i'll tell you the construction here again with the same diagram it consists of an air tight stainless steel bomb placed inside the copper calorimeter the calorimeter is surround the stainless steel bomb cylinder is surrounded with the water that is a known weight of water to prevent the heat loss and which is been again further is in contact with the copper calorimeter and we have an electrical operating mechanical stirrer sorry electrical operating stirrer not mechanical electrical operating stirrer and to mix the water properly and we have an a beckman thermometer to read the temperature this is all about the construction now moving on to the working a known weight of fuel in the form of pellet is taken in the crucible and placed inside the bomb the bomb is kept inside the copper calorimeter containing a known weight of water then we have to note down the initial temperature of the water with the help of thermometer and oxygen is pumped from the wall and the ignition or the combustion is subjected and whatever the amount of heat liberated here that is absorbed by the water and there is an increase in the temperature which are supposed to be noted down from the thermometer and as i already told the amount of heat absorbed by the copper calorimeter is also been determined and with the sort of observations like the weight of a fuel i'll write the observation directly here these are very important to understand so observation weight of the fuel sample taken fuel sample taken that is m gram that we must require and weight of water taken in calorimeter that is w1 gram then water equivalent of calorimeter that is w2 gram initial temperature initial temperature that is t1 degree centigrade final temperature of water is t2 degree centigrade then then specific heat of water is s yes, joules per kg joules per kg per degree centigrade so now heat released heat released by m gram of fuel is equal to heat gained by heat gained by water into 
heat gained by copper calorimeter so which i can write it like m is equal to w1 plus w2 into t2 minus t1 so or i can even write in this form that that is w1 plus w2 into t2 minus t1 divided by m that is in terms of calories per gram even right here that is gcv is equal to this so m is a mass of a fuel which we have taken for the experiment w1 is weight of water taken in calorimeter w2 is a water equivalent of calorimeter t2 is final temperature t1 is initial temperature which is again expressed in terms of calories per gram we want to convert in terms of joules per kg then it should be multiplied into 4.187 divided by 10 raised to minus 3 then it is going to be joules per kg so this is how we have to calculate the gcv so now moving on to the determination of net calorific value as i told early the formula of uh, this ncv the same thing we are going to discuss now net calorific value let the fuel contains h percentage of hydrogen that is h2 plus half oxygen is going to give on a water molecule this is a reaction so here that means 2 gram of hydrogen produce 18 grams of water molecule so here water formed by 1 kg of fuel is equal to 18 divided by 2 into h divided by 100 is equal to 0 0.09 h into h then latent heat of steam is equal to 587 calories per gram then latent heat of water formed that is 0 0.09 into percentage of hydrogen into 587 calories per gram again that I can write it in this NCV is equal to GCV minus latent heat of water formed is equal to what so GCV minus 0 0.09 into percentage of hydrogen into 587 again this calories per gram we can be converted to joules per kg by multiplying 4.187 to minus 3 that is joules per kg so this is how we are going to determine the gcv and encv so tomorrow we are going to discuss some numerical problems on this bomb calorimeter where we are going to calculate the gcv encv okay after cal after calculating gcv we have to calculate the latent heat of water formed then to calculate encv we have to reduce or we have to deduct latent heat of water from the gcv so we are going to get a value of encv this we are going to discuss tomorrow thank you